What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got to be honest with you guys. I did not really expect my opinion to come out the way that it did for Season 5 with Modern Warfare 2, but I got to be honest with you guys. Uh, from looking through the patch notes and then afterwards trying everything out, giving it a shot, things have actually gotten a tad bit better. Now, of course, you know, still same old, same old BS when it comes to skill-based matchmaking, microtransactions, you know, the typical practices from Activision. But I don't know if it's competition because of X Defiant or what's going on here. But now, out of all the times in the world, it seems that Infinity Ward is starting to listen a little bit. Five seasons down the road, you know, sadly too late for a lot of individuals. But again, I'm obviously always going to give my honest opinion here. So I got to state the facts here. I kind of enjoyed season five. Now, of course, in this video today, I'm going to go ahead and give my first initial impressions over on my stream. I went ahead and I put in a bunch of hours. Of course, if you guys want to actually participate in these streams, I'm going to be live again today over on kick, grinding out some more season five, trying to unlock the weapons so I can review those and, you know, make all different types of content because, of course, we have a lot of videos plan for this upcoming week and also the weekend. We're going to deep dive into a lot of the adjustments that have been done in the patch notes, a lot of weapon changes, you know, testing out new DLC weapons and comparing them to OGs, along with the map that you see right here, Strike, which is an OG classic, a banger. We're going to go back and compare it to the COD 4 classic as well. It's a lot of stuff that we have to go ahead and cover. So, of course, if you guys want to stay notified on all of this stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you get notified every single time a video goes live. But for today's video specifically, like I said, first initial impressions, that's all we're going to really, you know, dabble in. We'll go deeper into other topics later on. But again, I have to be honest with you guys. I am kind of impressed with the layout of what we got in this game. The content is content. You know, at this point in time, since there's been so many seasons, the game is finally kind of caught up. So, you know, it's just on top, you know, it's, it's icing on top of the cake at this point. We're not playing a game of catch up. You know, we are now enjoying DLC content that's extra added on top. And it actually feels that way. You know, it's not like season one, season two, where it's like, OK, you know, oh, we're almost to a complete game. We're almost getting out. It kind of feels like that now, whether the game is good or bad content wise. It's been stuffed up a little bit now. So content is content, like I said. But the biggest thing that happened in this update, in my personal opinion, that I didn't know that was going to you know, happen in the first place is the freaking movement update. Uh, I, I didn't really expect that to happen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm going to dive deeper into this, but they messed around with the movement when it comes to sliding and also jumping in this game. I believe they allow you to jump a tad bit higher, and also when you're landing, it's not going to take up as much momentum. So you can actually change some movement pretty nicely now. Not as fluent as previous Call of Duty games, and again, I'm going to dabble in it more, study more, and also compare it to other COD games more, and we're going to actually talk about that. But for the time being, compared to what we had before this update, tremendously better. And when it comes to the sliding, it's not technically slide canceling but the sliding is a way more fluent and you know i can't complain about that i'll agree the sliding isn't really something that i use in this game i use dolphin diving i jump shot and i drop shot that's all i use when it comes to Modern warfare 2 sliding it's not really beneficial in my personal opinion but now finally it feels like i do want to go ahead and incorporate it into my mix Again, I kind of want to study a bit more because I don't completely understand the mechanics yet, and I want to get a full understanding before I actually talk more deeply into that. But at the end of the day, that is definitely, you know, two thumbs up in my personal opinion, and it's about time Infinity Ward actually stepped up to the plate and really did something for the community. But again, five seasons too late. I can't believe we had to wait five seasons to get these movement updates. It's just mind-boggling to me, but, you know, it's hard. It's, re it's a really hard spot because... I want to complain for it taking so long, but it's finally done. You know, it's something that the community has been waiting ages for. I mean, can I really complain about it? Uh, but there are some things I can complain about. Yeah, uh, there are bugs that have come along when it comes to this new recent update. Uh, I think the UAV glitch bug is still in the game. I saw exclusive Ace talk about this over on Twitter, and he said that from his experience, he hasn't noticed anything. And I didn't either in my first hour or two of my PlayStation, but three to four hours in, I started to notice the UAV bug. You know, I call on my own UAV, and I see their, you know, red dots. And for anybody who doesn't know what the UAV bug, basically, the red dots on the minimap move 24-7, almost like an advanced UAV. It's not a triangle, so you can see their direct, you know, direction that they're looking at. But you can still tell, you know, how close they are, when they're coming, and you could pre-fire extra good, you know, it, it, it's toxic. For something as simple as getting a UAV, that shouldn't be happening, and it really does kill the overall gameplay. And I thought it was going to be fixed, but no, it's not fixed. And that is a huge game changer when it comes to enjoying this title. 
I, I don't know why it's not something that's been publicly talked about. Again, maybe they did try to fix it, and it's just not done yet for me. Maybe I need to try to hop on again tomorrow and be like a little stealth patch. But they did not mention it in the bugs on the patch notes, so they didn't publicly announce it. And from my experience, they didn't really fix it in-game as well. But I... I have to be real. That's it. That That's really the only complaint when it comes to, you know, everything in the game. Yeah, it's really bad. But at the end of the day, I'm kind of excited to see Strike come back. The new DLC map is kind of cool. It reminds me a bit of Favela. It's a lot of rooftop warfare. But at the same time, it's not very campy. It's a nice little mix. I got to be honest. I'm having tons of fun on it so far. And again, I'm going to try to dabble in it a little bit longer to, you know, get a better impression of it. Knowing that's going to be another map coming into the mid-season, we have two weapons, which is going to be a pain in the butt because the battle pass takes forever to grind. But again, I picked them up off the ground, and, you know, they're cool enough. And we have the FFAR, which we already used in Black Ops Cold War, so I'm going to be testing it out in this game when I finally unlock it. And the WA-2000, which, once again, you know, from Modern Warfare 2, the OG, I kind of want to compare the two of them as well, but it's going to take forever for me to unlock them. So please have a little patience with me because, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time. If you're, Unless you go ahead and cough up 20, 30, 40 bucks in the battle pass and you really want to buy through, then yeah. But, you know, I'm using free COD points that I've been gaining. I never use money in this. <laughs> just take my free COD points and just run it up again. So, you know, I don't, I don't have enough to buy my way through to get the actual weapons themselves. So patience is key, but we will get them at some point in time. And also, very quickly, I do want to mention this because it just popped up into my head as another negative out of this season. I, I know, it's a little all over the place, but again, this is just my first initial impressions. I got done playing it, and I'm just trying to, uh, you know, pour all of my emotions out from what I actually experienced with the game. Again, we'll go deeper into detail later on. But one of the negatives that I found out was that tax printing seems to be a little gunked up. Uh, I think probably something went wrong when they incorporated the new update to the movement. I don't think they intentionally meant to gunk up the tax print. I think it's just... It, you know, a little bug, but right now it's taken a bit long to regen your tax print like you normally could. And I thought it was a little crazy at first until I saw, you know, Hummus Thunder over on Twitter, you know, another go on YouTube as well. And he mentioned it too. And it kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, connecting the dots. Yeah, there's a problem going on with tax print. Again, leave it down in the comment section if you noticed it as well. But man, you know, my typical movement that I usually have in this game feels a, a bit stranger, even though the sliding is a lot more fluent and, you know, jumping actually feels a little bit more clean. The tax sprint just feels to be a little held back. But that, that's again, that's really all it is when it comes to the negatives across the board. I had a good time. They introduced a brand new game mode called Havoc, I believe is what it's called, which is another cool thing. I'm probably going to make a complete separate video again, you know, maybe dabbling in it, maybe a live com or something of that sort. We'll see when the time comes, you know, really exploring what it has to offer. But it's really cool. From my initial impressions, I played a couple of matches, didn't really dive too deep. So, you know, again, something I need to put more time into. You can check out my streams if you want to be a part of that process. Squad up with us. We always do open lobbies. But it's really cool because it really goes back down to its, you know, arena roots. I, I like that. And it's something unique in my personal opinion. It's the first good game mode in my personal opinion when it comes to what they introduced into the overall experience. You know, we get some bangers like Cranked and stuff, but we've had that in the past. I'm talking about new stuff that's being made here. This is probably the best thing that I've seen since God knows when Cranked was introduced. You know, when it comes to the limited time modes, they're cool and all, but I never really care for them. This is the first time I'm actually like, wow, this is kind of fun. Uh, basically, you're on a timer, both teams, and you go ahead and grind up and you get perks basically you know like one shot headshots constant uavs you know basically zero gravity so you can get extra jumps and float around a little bit it's it's it's, it's arena it's it's arena -y. and it's really cool it's unique and i really hope they keep it in the game as a party experience it's not really something you want to be competitive in obviously it's you know it's a bunch of corks in there to throw off the experience and you know it could be a lot of curveballs that are unfair but as a party game mode, this is a perfect, perfect implementation to add into the overall mix. Infinity Ward also made a handful of pretty positive changes as well to the perks, including Quick Fix, which I, I honestly didn't know before. I might just be completely stupid, but once again, go down in the comment section and let me know if this has been a thing before. I didn't know Quick Fix works when you're on an OBJ, and I'm a pretty heavy OBJ dominant player, you know? When we're playing matches of domination, hardpoint, I'm up in there because obviously that's where the action's going to be at. You know, any player or at least, you know, a higher upskill player knows that if you want a little action and you also want to get on the top of the leaderboard, you want to score, you got to play a bit of both roles, OBJ and Slayer. But on the OBJ, I never noticed Quick Fix really doing anything for me. But with this most recent update, they added in an icon now. So basically when you're on OBJ, it'll show the icon for Quick Fix popping up when you're getting healed. And this is phenomenal because, again, it opened my eyes to what Quick Fix actually does as well. I always thought it was just after every single kill that you got, but 
I'm, I'm assuming the whole time now, when you're on OBJs, it, it heals you up as well. You can literally sit on the B flag. And I, I've taken three, almost four grenades at a time while sitting on B, just laying prone, praying for my life. And each time it quick fixed me back up with help. Again, I don't remember that ever happening before. I feel like this is just a complete overhaul to the perk, which I really do enjoy. But at the end of the day, whatever. It's great for OBJ, and I'm glad they're making these changes to the perks to make the game a bit more aggressive. At the, and, you know, at the end of the day, the whole point of this season was making Modern Warfare 2 more aggressive. I don't know if they're trying to implement stuff into this game to try to test stuff out for Modern Warfare 3, whatever it is. But between the movement, perk rearrangements, you know... All of the above, the game has quickened up in its pace. Of course, not that much. It's still tons of skill-based matchmaking, so it's a lot of sweats. And you know how sweats play. They like to hold the head glitches. They like to, you know, play for their streaks. It's the same old, same old. So you, sometimes you'll get some slow, boring, obnoxious matches. Stuff that's just not very fun. And yeah, you gotta play those. But just down to the base movement, if skill-based matchmaking wasn't the title, I think there would just be a tad bit more enjoyment within the community. I'll be honest here. With this current update, of course, with the movement changes. But again, like I said, I gotta say, nothing but a bunch of positives, even down to, you know, the death feed. They added in a new feature that allows you to see, you know, how much damage each enemy does to you, you know, what weapon in specific, you can see an image of it. It's a lot more detailed. And honestly, I love this. I always love when developers dive deeper into death feeds or even your own kill feeds as well. Uh, what would be even cooler is if you die and you hold tab and you pull up your scoreboard, what would be cool is if it showed like maybe a little heat map of your body to show where the enemy actually hits you as well. It would be a great way to counter cheaters to see if anybody's aimbotting, if they're only hitting you in the head 24-7. But I think it would be a little bit more creative. Like I said, I like stuff like that and I think it's cool to be able to study certain things. And it also shows you about your own accuracy. Then we have something like that in Black Ops 1. It was one of the OG COD games that implemented that. But it will be cool if it was live in the middle of the match, along with the new feed system and all that stuff. That would be nice. They also implemented a new UI overhaul, which again... I, I hate the UI in this game. It doesn't matter. Any amount of... Uh, that, that, I guess there. Here. Here you guys go. More for a little bit of a rant. <laughs> That's another thing I despise in this update is that they put all that work and effort into another UI overhaul and it still looks like Hulu. Uh, I'm going to have to make a whole separate video about that and really just, just lay it out plain and simple for the easiest way to make a good UI. It, it, it's, it's I don't know why it has to be so complex. I really don't. Uh, whatever. I guess it's minor improvements. They have made some good things, but... Nothing crazy. I, I kind of understand that's going to take, you know, forever, ages to actually overhaul the complete UI. So they probably don't even want to do it. I'm assuming that's something that we have to wait until Model for 3 comes around. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to go ahead and complain about it. <laughs> I need something out here to complain about. <sighs> Overall, like I said a million other times before, I think it's decent what we got here. The real question is, is it worth hopping back into the experience and is it actually going to hold the player base over? And that's where the real, the real answer lies. And honestly, I don't think it is. It's too little too late. You know, this communication, this feedback, this stuff that's going on here, this should have been done ages ago. Ages ago to be able to maintain the player account. <laughs> you think people are going to come back in Season 5, especially when it's going to be a brand new Call of Duty game that's around the corner? No, you know, it's not going to keep many people at all. I think right now, basically, if you're still playing Modern Warfare 2, you are going to be witnessing the test phase. Basically, the transition into the next Call of Duty game is what I'm thinking is going to be happening here. Between, you know, changes to movement and changes to basically everything else overall, I think is going to be happening. As much as they could possibly do. I don't think the perks and all that stuff is going to be changing, you know, obviously. But stuff like we saw with movement, yeah, I can see more stuff being adjusted around. Especially with the surveys they've been asking us. Because we've all been asked surveys on how we like the movement, how we like the time to kill. Very interesting, you know, surveys. And now seeing that one of the surveys about movement was actually answered to a certain degree. Again, like I said, I'm going to dive deeper. And maybe eh, there might have to be some critiques and things that need to be worked on. But again, they did it. Does that mean that the time to kill survey is going to come true as well? Only time will tell. But if you're playing Model for 2 right now, like I said, you're just a test dummy. <laughs> okay, that's what we have to accept it as. You're a test dummy for the next COD title. We'll see how it goes. But overall, like I said, again, guys, this is just my first initial impressions. I thank you guys for listening. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell notification button. You'll be notified for all my videos that go live this week, this weekend, when we start talking about other stuff and, you know, really dissecting stuff. And, of course... As always, if you guys want to actually tune to the streams as well, like I said, over on Kick, link to that is down in the description. We start around 12 to 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to go ahead and like, dislike, whatever you feel like doing. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.